pull it off. Yeah, I mean, and I, I've seen it. I mean, I used to work, I worked at the theaters for like two years. I saw it a lot. I remember the first day at work, uh, the ushers were kind of egging me on. Be like, hey, turn the guy, you know, tell the guy to turn his phone off. Mm-hmm. And I went up to him, and I was just, uh, I was, uh, <laughs> let's say, straightforward. And I was like, turn up your cell phone. And he looked at me weird. Like, he just looked at me and, like, who are you talking to? So, <laughs> that's how that started. Oh, man. But nothing happened out of that. He just kind of, like, you know, looked at me funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, I mean, I've seen it. You know, it's just kind of, it is distracting. I mean, what? Yeah. I mean, can, I can put my phone down for two hours if I'm going to watch a movie. Yeah. Even, there, even if it's a shitty one, like Batman or Superman, the first time I saw it, you know, it's not like I have my phone out. Mm-hmm. You know, I just, yeah, I, like, you might, you know, my dad is guilty of that too. You know, he'll look out his cell phone just to see what's up. I'm like, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do it, like, if, if I'm expecting a call that I think I've missed. Because I'll, I'll, I'll turn off the vibrate and everything. Usually when I go in, well, usually I'll, I'll try to set it on vibrate, but a lot of time. It will it will go below like it, it will turn the vibrate off. So sometimes I'll check if it's important, but it's like I got my hand over it or something. So you know, so it doesn't really disturb people. But yeah, millennials. Oh my God, why are we try, trying to attract millennials to the theater? Like Mill- Mill- millennials don't care. They're too busy at home watching Netflix. They're they'd rather be on Facebook. They'd rather be on Twitter. I know I'm guilty of that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, me too. I still want that movie theater experience, and mm-hmm. I don't want any distractions. You know, I, <laughs> if you want to make your own theater where you can allow text in, then create your own damn theater. Yeah, yeah. And and if, if people have no intentions of going to the movies, you know, just sit there and be on their phone, then then just sit at just sit at home, and what's the point of going out? Exactly. Cell phones, man, they've come a long way. Definitely. They come a long way. You, you see, like, now with the population, just how much it's like, wow. It's like, humans depend on it so much now. It's incredible. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's just, it's, kind of, it's, it's definitely dominated, dominating our lives, but... Yeah. Uh... So what do you think about this? Uh, Furious 7 director James Wan thinks his film deserves an Oscar. Uh, I haven't heard of that one yet. Uh, he says, I thought we were guaranteed to get a nomination. Uh, one was for the song and the other was for the visual effects. Hmm. I see. He felt he got cheated. It's from which one? Fast 7. Oh, Fast 7? Yeah, the last one. Um, I haven't seen I haven't seen Fast Seven yet, but um, I don't know. It made a, it made a pretty big chunk of change, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know much about the score or anything, um, because I haven't seen it yet. But uh, he shouldn't be bitter about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of film. I mean, Stallone didn't win, but I'm not, you know, starting a campaign. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm not starting a social media war. Oh, Stallone didn't win. Yeah. Um, let me, let me make another Peter Pan movie, too. Yeah, like, how many... That's that's crazy how many Peter Pan movies there are now. Yeah, how many live-action Peter Pan movies do you need? Yeah, because Pan turned out so great, and that was such a box office, box office success. Yeah. Like, I think it's the same director, or... Yeah, so this is going to be, like, the third live-action pen, plus Hook. Let me see. Plus the animated one, right? So that's three, four, that's five, five, this is going to be six? Five or six? Yeah, it's going to be live-action. Wow. I think, for me, Hook was, like, my favorite pure pen next to, like, the Disney one. Like, the original Disney one, you know? Yeah. Hook was such a great movie. Hook is classic. Yeah. Uh, it can't be topped. And, okay, we're, we got we to gotta make another Peter Pan movie, live action. I'm like, mm-hmm. it's not going to work. It's going to suck. Yeah. 
And I forgot about Pete's Dragon trailer. <laughs> god. Oh god. Pete's right. Dragon. Pete's Dragon. Why are we making Pete's Dragon? Yeah, there's no uh I don't know about that one. Makes me think of Puff the Magic Dragon. Yeah. Why ever the Puff the Magic Dragon and watch it? Yep. I'd rather puff some magic dragon, you know. I don't do that stuff. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I mean in comparison. Yeah. <laughs> in comparison to watching. I saw the, I saw the trail just like, shit. <laughs> yeah, it was, yeah, I, I'm with you. It didn't look very, um, it didn't look very intriguing. It kind of looked like they were trying to copy Never Ending Story a little bit. But that did it better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Never Ending Story is like, that's a, uh, that's a classic, man. That's uh, classic. Yeah, like that's like fairy tale movie, kids fairy tale movie on a completely different level. You know that was wow. I don't know why they can't make movies like that anymore. I don't understand what's so hard about building a whole bunch of stuff and really because that they. Care. I think a part of it is that they don't want to scare kids because I know that there were some images that. Kind of frightening about never any story. Yeah, yeah, I was very frightened by the Mork. I didn't like the Mork at all. It took me a long time to to watch it after that, but I all I always have the the memories of watching that movie, and it's a great movie. Like, wow, you would think it would be a good trade off to make less money in the end and have a better movie that will stand the test of time. You know. Yeah. So. Damn. Um, I was going to say. But yeah, I mean, do you see like nowadays, like, films, like when it comes to like PG movies, they don't, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't like to go to like, use frightening images anymore. Like, back in the day, you would scare kids and they would do it and not hold, you know, hold back on certain things, even in a PG film. Mm hmm. But nowadays, it's like they don't want to use frightening images and kind of... They don't want to put that little scare into kids or... Mm -hmm. Even if it's just little, you know, small, subtle things. Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I mean, I don't know if you kind of get what I'm saying. Yeah, like... I just, I just find that there's... There's a lot less... Like scary about... Goonies. Oh, I'm sorry? Like Sloth and Goonies. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just think that nowadays there's no... It's kind of like, okay, we got six months to make a movie. Let's make the movie happen. Uh, get everybody on board. And they don't really... They don't really take the time to really invest themselves into what they're making. Uh, is kind of what I want to say. Like, it just feels like they... Film companies aren't making movies anymore. They're making, like, product. You know, like, uh... Oh. No, like, like, when everything was in the practical era, when they were building everything, you could tell that people were proud in what they did. Like, you look at, like, the, the Thing, right? Like, yeah. the old Thing movie. Um, and, you know, just, like, that scene at the end where the the thing comes through the through the f through the floor and everything how they all made that with um, miniatures and stuff or like all the the care it took to go into like the practical uh, like the effects of like like the, the spider head and even um, how they did the um, the scene uh, the scene with the uh, what do you call that defibrillator yeah. Like, wow, like, they actually took time, you know, like, they took time, they took very much care of it to make it look really great. Uh, you can tell there was a lot of love and respect and showmanship put into the craft. And nowadays, it's like, okay, well, we can't afford a rhinoceros, so we'll CGI one in, you know? Yeah. And they lose that. They, I guess... They lose the the magic of it almost, like the um, the sleight of hand aspect of it. 
you know, like the wonder of how they could make something look a certain way and still fool you with like the mechanics and all that. They don't. No one does that anymore. No, I mean, it's sad. It's like, am I supposed to be scared by CGI creatures? I mean, I know I'm. Like, even for PG movies, I know I'm old. I know I. PG movies are not for me anymore. Mm-hmm. Yes, I mean, there's been PG movies in the past that have worked. Uh, but it's just one of these things I've noticed that. It's like they don't want to frighten kids anymore. Now I'm not like a horror, like a slash away or like a, a killing sense or anything like that just kind of like even just sm- subtle stuff you know yeah like I know you talked about before never ending story about that creature that was in the cave and his eyes glowed yeah you know just subtle stuff like that yeah know, uh, stuff, you know, stuff that will stick with you for years yeah uh, or nowadays if you get stuff like that then oh damn parents are going to write a petition yeah. And we're, we're going to petition parenting, and we're going to, you know, this is not happening, this is not, you know. And then parents are going to get in trouble for bringing their kids to it. Oh, yeah. you're a bad parent because you brought your kid to see this movie. Like with Deadpool, oh, I'm going to write a petition. My kid's not going to see yeah. this. Well, they make should, a decision. Yeah, but they, you know, if they're going to do that, they should have known beforehand to do their homework on whatever movie their kid's going to see. You know, they shouldn't. They shouldn't let their kid go see the movie and then be like, okay, you know. It's it's like they have no excuse. It's all over the internet that it's an R-rated movie. And you send your kid to it, and then after that you complain? No. It doesn't work. No, I mean, it's just... That woman was crazy. Yeah. I mean, your, your petition is, is virtual toilet paper. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you just wipe your ass with it. <laughs> they should uh, have her in the sequel. Yeah. Chop her uh, up. <laughs> <laughs> I would see that. Damn. Did you hear uh, about that lady who shot the intruder? And, uh, uh, there was this woman, there was these two guys trying to break into this woman's house and one had like a hunting knife, 10 inch hunting knife. And they're trying to pry open the door and it was just this young lady and her baby. I think she was like 18, 19, maybe 20. And she called 911. And she was like, uh, do I have permission to shoot these guys trying to break in? And uh, it turns out that if... That she was allowed... Where she lived, she was allowed She was allowed to shoot. She had a... Uh, she had reasonable cause. And uh, she warned them and they kept trying to come in. And... The first guy got and she shot. She shot like a 22-year-old kid. Point blank range with a shotgun. Boom. Wow. Took him out. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Well, I say point blank, but it was probably more like, I don't know, 10, 15 feet, maybe 20 feet. From what, from what I could see, well, maybe like how big my the space in my kitchen, so maybe like, yeah, maybe like 15 feet. From what I could see in the video, um, like the reenactment video at her home, because the news people did like a reenactment, um, from what I could see it was like 10, 15 feet. But still 10, 15 feet, that's... I, I can you imagine like the sound, like the bam, the damn, that's crazy. You'd probably go deaf, right? Because yeah. you're, you're in such a small environment. But, uh... Yeah, that was crazy. I saw that and I was like, whoa. Whoa. She had cause. Yeah. But that, okay. you know, that's, that's crazy. That's probably going to stick with her for life. You know, she's probably going to feel really bad. You know. So, that's crazy. Anyway. Yes. I just read something funny. Uh, apparently, Twitter's blowing up against James Cameron's Avatar sequels. Oh. Just call me. It's James Cameron. Yeah, James Cameron. <laughs> Phone was ringing. He's like, you fucking talking shit about this. I should have answered and be like, fuck you, Jimmy Cameron. 